scrolling along with Susan. Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how I use Inkscape, which is a free vector uh, computer program, to design my own 3D compound cut name plates. And here they are in person. They're a lot of fun to do. So uh, this is how I make them. I'm going to be doing a tutorial on my computer using a free vector Inkscape program to show you how I do 3D nameplates. And this is what one that's cut out looks like. Let me pull this up here. So this is made out of poplar. It's one and a quarter inches by one and a quarter inches. And I don't know, I think it looks kind of cool. So I'm showing you how I design mine. Now, using Inkscape, if you have never used it before, you should probably go online and do some tutorials so you become familiar with this program because I'm not going to go into great detail with it. I'm just going to show you how I make mine. Now, I have erased and put back into default from the beginning so I can show you how I come up with everything in this um, display. So I have a new document up here. I'm going to go right over to File, Document Properties. I want to work in a grid so I can make everything as even and um, coincide with each other as much as possible. So I'm going to go over here to Grids, New, and behind they automatically put up a grid for you. But this is really hard to follow. It's so tiny. So I'm going to change this to inches. I'm going to have the spacing X and Y the same size. So I'm going to do a 0.15 on both the X and Y and watch how it changes behind me here. That's the X and I'm going to go over here and it changed 0.15. You can change it to whatever you like or maybe you don't want to use grids but it's a lot harder to make sure everything is uniformed if you don't use grids. All right, X out of there. Now I have a nice grid to work with. Now it's time for me to do my first shape. I'm coming over here and clicking on the square. And you can see it's going to be red when I draw it. And I want a medium sized gray because when I print this out, I don't want to use a lot of ink. Hold down the left mouse button and drag it to whatever shape you want for your um, octagon. Now this is going to be one and a half, or excuse me, one and a quarter by one and a quarter, and we're going to size it up properly later on. But right now, this is just so we can do our pattern. Right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good. I have seven squares this direction. I've got my first shape done. Now the next thing I want to do is put a nice line around each one of my shapes that make it easier to detect which one is which. So this is going to be my bottom one. This is the part that's going to be gluing to my wood. I'm going to be coming up here to Object, clicking on Fill and Stroke, which will give this display on this side. I'm going to choose my stroke paint. It's going to be black. And my stroke style, this is where you have whatever size that you want. It shows dashes, but I do want a solid line. Well, actually, it looks like it is a solid line. And right up here for the width, I'm going to hit start hitting the plus sign. I want you to see what's happening on the screen. See, it's getting thicker and thicker and thicker. I don't need my line to be that thick. I'm going to back it off here. And... I think that's pretty good. I'm going to have it at 1.2 millimeters and that one's all set. So now all the other shapes that I make are going to have that stroke style line around it, which is what I want. Coming over here, clicking this arrow. This is if I don't have the right size and I want to make it wider or deeper or whatever you want to do with it. If you click again, it gives you different shapes where you can have the left higher or the left lower, right higher or left lower, or whatever you want. So that's, that's the form you actually want to have with the arrows pointing in all directions 
to change to keep the actual shape of a, of a rectangle up. Okay, I'm going to click in the blank area here so I don't have any arrows. I'm going to go back to the square. I don't want my same square to be gray. So I'm coming down here and clicking on white. Click to the left, drag. I'm going to have two of these shapes. This is the actual part you're going to be cutting out. You're going to be cutting out the white part on the wood. All right, let go. I'm up here, actually, I think I would like to have this with rounded edges for the middle part that's cutting it out just because it looks a little nicer. So I'm going to round the edge here, dragging this circle a little bit. There, I like that. Clicking the arrow, and now I can make whatever size that I want. Now you want to have each side the same distance apart, and you want to have the top and the bottom the same distance apart. You're going to have two of these, one on the top and one on the bottom piece of your wood. I'm going to drag it right to this line, and then the next one will go from this line out to here. Let's see, that is about three quarters up there. Okay, so I'm going to right click, duplicate, left, hold it down, and drag your second one here. All right, and then we're going to adjust these later when I get it more detailed. Come over here, click in a blank spot. Now I need to show a nice straight line right across. That's the part that's going to crease and fit right on your piece of wood. So I'm clicking this outside. Right there is the center of this rectangle. Coming over here, I'm sure I'm pronouncing this incorrectly, but it's basically where you can draw a straight line. It says draw bizarre, I think it is, curves and straight lines. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click over here to where I believe that line was. Click that and then draw a line onto the other side in the same position. Let's see, that looks good. Click on that. All right, come back over here. I'm going to click this. Wow, I am really close. It is a little askew, so I do need to adjust that a little bit. Just a little bit down. And actually, it's showing it to be right on. Or else it would show that it's a little, it would show it askew more. All right, that's good. Now that this is in one piece, I'm going to highlight it all so it is in one piece. I'm going to align these two white pieces. Actually, before I do that, let me go over here and move this up a little bit because it needs to be moved up so that this side is as even as that side and this one needs to move down. Now, you can eyeball it like this and work with it this way or highlight it all come over here to this little arrow, click on that, and we're going to go to Align and Distribute. Click on that. This is giving us ways to align up and down, side to side. I want to distribute all of this to distribute horizontally with even spacing between centers. I'm going to click on that and see what happens. On each side, the top the bottom, and the top, and the bottom of this, and it's all set. So now that it's all highlighted, I want to go up here to Object, excuse me, Path, Object to Path, and then I want to go up to Object and Group, because I want this whole thing to move together now that it's all set. And at this time, I think I'm going to save it. Save as 3D Nameplate. So if I accidentally click something, I can always go back, you know, and start at this ground zero. Now the next step is to do the name on the inside. So I'm going to go over here to this arrow again. Click on that. Go to 
text and font, click on that. Here you can pick whatever, come come over here and hit on this A. You can click whatever size, shape, whatever you want, what kind of alphabet that you want. Pick uh, cursive down here and it gives you an example of what they all look like down here. And I want a very upright, clear, crisp look to mine. So I'm going to go with this sans serif bold print. And I'm going to, in fact, I might even set that as default so it will stay that way. Now I'm going to click on here and type my name in caps. All right. And it's going to show the last color I used, which is white. Well, that's not going to show up too well, so I'm going to change that to a gray as well. Let's go a little bit lighter. Okay. Come up here to this arrow so I can move it around and widen it to fit into my white area. Now your idea here is to make sure this top part and the bottom part align directly with this black line on the bottom and top like that and the top part. The white part is what you're going to be cutting out here. And if you want to shrink it a little bit and have more white, that's fine too. And with your grid, you can tell how evenly distributed this is. Clicking in a blank area, going back here to the name for the bottom. I'll use my last name. Okay, back up here to this arrow so I can move this around and expand this as well. Now there is a way to use an align and distribute if you want to get it just perfect. But I tell you, with these grid lines, this is pretty, it's going to be pretty darn close. Put it up a little bit higher there. There we go. Let's take a look here. It can be, actually I have it too high lower it a little bit and I need to lower this part a little bit and there you have whoops too far your basic design now you want to work on the size the SUZ is going to be larger than the lore because there's three letters instead or three letters instead of four down here and if you want them to all look the same size, you can do that through the align and distribute. But I like the way that it looks and this is what I'm keeping. Now I'm going to left click, highlight everything. And up here it's going to tell you the size that you're working with. I want to go to inches. And right now it's 5.2 inches tall. Well, I need one and a quarter and one and a quarter, which is two and a half total. And then I have this little line here, which I'm going to add like a 0.12. To. So I'm going to change this to a 2.6 to accommodate that line. And for the width, I want it to be as long as uh, six inches. Whoops, let's go back here. We'll just change this, highlight this, and change this to six inches, 6.00. Click. Now I have something 2.59 inches by six inches long. And you are ready to save, and you are ready to print this, and glue it right to your piece of wood. So I hope you give it a try. And um, don't forget to keep on scrolling. Thanks for watching.